What's going on, guys? Welcome back into the New England Patriots franchise here on Madden 23, a simulation-style franchise where we're going to be not playing it as realistic as we typically do here on the channel. We're going to be just trying to build a team around rookie quarterback Bailey Zappi and trying to take this team potentially eventually to a Super Bowl. It's going to be mainly simulation-based, and we went over that in the last video. We went over the moves that we've already made to get the roster where we want it to be. So we're going to go ahead in this video and get things started. Really, season one isn't going to matter too, too much for us, but we'll see what happens as we advance. I've gone ahead and forced the wins for the first six weeks. The Patriots stand at three and three. So we'll get up to that week seven time frame and begin advancing from there. One quick note before we get into the actual advancement through the season is that we will be utilizing a realistic draft class, a draft class that I downloaded off of the Madden Share system and edited it to be significantly better than any of the other ones that I found out there. So it's not necessarily going to be the best draft class at this point, but I know it is reliable enough to have at the very least the top few rounds worth of players and relatively realistic profiles for those players. And we're going to be joined back here in week eight, actually, not week seven. I tried to do a simulation to midseason and cancel out of that simulation to get to week seven and kind of hit it maybe a little bit too late. So it took us one extra week forward. Nonetheless, we did get the sim win against the Chicago Bears. You can see there in the middle of the screen. 24 to 22. And just to do a quick check in on our major stat leaders as we advance through to week eight, we have Bailey Zappi, who should not have been playing all of those simulation games, but because we decided to do the moves early on, he did play those games at 1,800 yards, 15 touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Leonard Fournette at 399 yards and five touchdowns, who is pretty much running a two back system with Damian Harris who has 259 yards and four touchdowns. Hunter Renfro looking great, leading our receiving core with 500 yards. Then the supporting cast mixed in with a decent distribution of yardage between Hunter Henry, Devontae Parker, Chase Claypool, as well as guys like Johnny Smith and those below them. With nothing really else of note on the entire stat sheet, not on the defensive side of the ball very much, I'm gonna go ahead and continue to advance through this season and see where we stand maybe a little bit closer to the end of the second half of the season, see if we can't maybe fall into a playoff spot. One thing that I will say is that the CPU teams don't have their real wins forced, so we could end up with a very different looking playoff picture than what we're seeing right now within real life. We're not looking for the most realistic franchise right now. I didn't want to put that much time into force simming every single game across the league for the first six weeks. So let's go ahead and keep pushing forward and see if this team might be able to sneak in on a playoff spot. Rolling into week 11, we are going to have another matchup against the New York Jets who actually just defeated us in week eight by a field goal. The reason that I'm bringing you guys in during week 11 11 is number one to see if we can bounce back and split this series with the New York Jets who are playing at above their typical standard. They are actually winning a few games and they're being competitive and they've been competitive with us. But more so than that, I want to take a look at our focus player scouting and I want to take a look at what we're going to be looking to do with the team in the offseason to address some of those positions of needs that we discussed in the first video. Realistically speaking, I think that this team needs to invest a little bit based on on our moves in the linebacker and defensive line positions. And there are quite a few players that meet that standard here within the uh, within this draft class and within the actual NCAA landscape. One of the players that I like quite a bit is Noah Sewell, who is out of Oregon, a brother of Penny Sewell, and uh, 6'3", 260 pound middle linebacker, kind of would fit into this system. I'm also hearing a lot of hype around Will Anderson Jr., who is a very effective player player for Alabama, has some pass rushing capabilities, has a really good nose for the football, really good block shedding capabilities. And then I also like a few of these players that are out here at the defensive end side of things, guys like Miles Murphy and Brian Brise. Now we have to keep in mind, we have multiple first round picks and multiple draft picks overall that we're going to be able to utilize to fill these gaps. So I want to keep an eye on a lot of these players. I think what I'm going to do is scout linebackers first and foremost 
as my individual players, specifically Will Anderson and Noah Soul. I want to know a lot about, and I actually like Henry Toa Toe. I don't really know how to say that, but I think that he has some potential as well. So those are going to be my focus scouted players on the linebacker end of things. Again, that's an area that we are very weak at right now, starting players that are in the low 70s, if not into the 60s. So we will have to adapt and overcome with those positions and some uh, draft picks that I'm expecting us to need to hit on in the offseason, despite who's going to be available in free agency. And indeed, we did split the series with the Jets, getting a 28 to 21 win against them in week 11. Now that we're basically into the back third of the season here, we do have some pretty powerful opponents, I guess is the best way to put it. The Vikings currently are sitting at six and four. The Bills are going to be a great opponent. The Cardinals have a lot, a lot of weaponry over there and a lot of potential. And the Raiders always have the potential to do damage as well. I really don't expect us to come out on the other side of this series of games in a very favorable position, but we are the New England Patriots and we do have Bill Belichick, who is the best head coach to ever do it. And I think that that gives us a shot at the very least in every single game that we play no matter what. So let's go ahead and advance at least to week 16 and see how this stretch of games is actually going to fare for us. And just like I predicted, we did come out of that series of games at a 7-7 seven and seven record with another couple of tough games just in front of us. We have the Cincinnati Bengals, Miami Dolphins, and Buffalo Bills. A couple of opportunities for us to potentially play spoiler and potentially earn a wild card ticket. I don't really think that it is foreseeable for us to make it into the playoffs based on those games that are ahead of us, but we were able to get the win against the Vikings, who were a 6-4 and four team. We lost the next three in a row, which is an unfortunate way to end that series, but a very tough series for this team to be able to overcome. We are sitting at 7-7, seven and seven, which is kind of where I would predict the Patriots to be. They could certainly play above that. They could certainly play below that, but I kind of view them as a, a middle-of-the-pack type of a team, and 7 Seven and seven is with a tough schedule like this kind of where you might expect this team to land. We were taken down by the Cincinnati Bengals 28 to 25. One note that I do want to throw in here, however, is that we have been very effective in a lot of these games. We've been competitive. So while we have been losing to teams like the Cincinnati Bengals, we only lost 28 to 25. A lot of the games have been one score games, which bodes well for the structure of this team especially considering how young we have made this team. Adding a few more key pieces here and there could mean that a lot of those one-score games go in our favor, and we could be right back to the top of the division. The Bills are always going to be the number one competitor now with how strong that roster is, but I really do believe that next year we'll be able to fight for a very important playoff position. In Week 17, we get the win at home in Foxborough against the Miami Dolphins, who were struggling to that point in the season, 37 to 34. We now come up with a very important matchup against the Buffalo Bills. This is an opportunity for us to finish second in the division and finish with a positive record. We are sitting at eight and eight, tied with the Jets, who are also sitting at eight and eight. The Buffalo Bills sit at 12 and four, which when we look at the AFC standings, presents us with an opportunity to knock the Bills off of the one seed. That's an incredibly important playoff positioning to obtain, especially if for a team like the Buffalo Bills, who want teams to come to their open stadium and want to have that weather that they have an advantage with. So we have Kansas City sitting just below them, the Baltimore Ravens. I would say that Kansas City presents a really good chance of taking over that one seed if they do get a win this week. I think the Buffalo Bills we could beat them this week. We could play spoiler. I'm really curious to see if we can make that happen. And then the other option that we have to look at here is do we stand a chance of making it into the playoffs at 8-8 eight and eight right now? To be quite honest, it is just simply not possible at this point with how many teams are sitting with really good records in front of us. We've got two teams at 12-4, and four, the 11-5 and five Ravens, and then a bunch of teams sitting at 10-6 and six with the Bengals, Chargers, Colts, Titans, and Steelers sitting at 10-6. and six. 
six, and there's still the chance that the Jets are going to get that win, and they are placed above us right now. We know that the Madden tiebreakers don't always work the way that they should, and so I don't really know how that would even happen, how that would work out if we both got a win and somehow managed to make it into the playoffs. I still don't think it's even possible with the number of teams that are up here without even counting them outright. I just think that we are knocked out of the playoffs officially. I'd like to end the season on a win here, though, against a really strong team like the Buffalo Bills. And believe it or not, guys, we do get the 34 to 28 win in week 18 over the Buffalo Bills. Obviously not going to be enough to get us into the playoffs because of how many teams had higher records than we did. We did finish at 9-8 and eight in second place in the division with a positive record. And for me, that's a win on the season. I think that that's about where the Patriots are projected to finish in real life anyway. I think that they have the potential to be above that, so don't get me wrong. But again... I'd say a pretty middle of the pack team fighting for more so a wild card spot more than anything, especially with how well the Dolphins and Bills have shown that they can they can do this year and the Jets being somewhat competitive as well. Really, the division stacks up as a pretty tough division now. It's been one of the weakest divisions in the NFL for decades, and it is finally turning into a real competition with the Dolphins and Jets finally getting on board with semi-competitive teams at this point. What's left to do at this point is to see who is going to win that Super Bowl trophy, but also to take a look at our stat leaders on the season to see how every one of our players has done. Bailey Zappi actually had a phenomenal season, throwing for 5,000 passing yards, 39 passing touchdowns, and 20 interceptions. I'm actually really excited to get my hands on Bailey Zappi and maybe play a game with him once in a while because he looks like he's a legit future quarterback for us, and I'm actually surprised that on the simulation, he did as well as he did. I think what factors into that is how well we did with shifting the team around and giving other players opportunities. What I am a little bit disappointed in is Leonard Fournette's performance, close to only 600 yards and 6 touchdowns. Touchdowns. Damian Harris had quite a bit with 338 yards and six touchdowns and Pierre Strong Jr. 334 and nine touchdowns. To me, that just signals that Leonard Fournette was injured at a certain point in the season, and I believe that's exactly what happened. I was not paying very close attention to the injury list, but certainly something to, uh, to note. And then our receivers had really good seasons. Red Zone Renfro with 1,200 yards and double-digit touchdowns. Devontae Parker adding another 1,100 with six touchdowns and Chase Claypool really starting to realize his potential like I said he would he's get, potentially getting traded to the Packers in real life 915 yards and seven touchdowns that's what he's capable of in a real system and Hunter Henry 869 yards with four touchdowns and then a handful of other players as well contributing below there we did not get contributions from Tyquan Thornton a lot of that is because I was not micromanaging the roster but we will be doing that more so going into year two that's perfect perfectly fine. He sat, he learned from the players in front of him, and I am perfectly A-OK -okay with that type of a result. Our three receivers that we do have on the roster did lead our team in receiving, and all were close to, if not above, 1,000 yards on the season. We did have really good contributions from players like Jawan Bentley with 121 tackles, 107 tackles from Mac Wilson Jr. We really did not have anybody that was giving us significant sack numbers, and that obviously is one of of our biggest concerns and one of our biggest areas that we need to address. The interception numbers, not the greatest. Bentley actually at middle linebacker had the most. Jack Jones with three. And there's not too much else out here to, to really talk about. Uh, not even any forced fumbles by anybody on the team. And typically you'll see linebackers with forced fumbles. So that lets us know right there what we need to address heading into the offseason. We need backers. We need pass rushers. And I think Again, part of that is not micromanaging the team. Montez Sweat was not necessarily in the, the ideal position. He was playing at the end in what is primarily a 3-4 system, so we will have to micromanage things and get things adjusted around to be more successful as we move forward. We're also going to need to find a new kicker because Nick Folk is more than likely going to retire. If he doesn't, we're going to let him go anyway, so we do have positions of need heading into the next season and a lot to, uh, to be hopeful about as well and some things that I think are going to be really exciting with the draft picks that we have and the potential to add some free agents heading into this offseason. And that'll do it for this install 
installment of the Patriots franchise here on Madden 23. Make sure you guys hit that notification button so you're notified whenever the next video goes up. We will be diving into the offseason. We'll find out who wins this first Super Bowl in this franchise, and we're going to get prepped and ready for the next season where we're going to more focus on what we're doing. Nonetheless, a really good season, all things considered, especially when we talk about Bailey Zappi with that 5,000 yard season. That's absolutely crazy, honestly. I'm I'm pretty surprised that he threw for 5,000. He actually finished for third in the NFL, just behind Tom Brady and Joe Burrow. Absolutely crazy. Fantastic season from him. The supporting cast did awesome. I hope that you guys are enjoying this franchise as much as I am. This is a good way to keep it fresh. So without further ado, I'll see you guys in the next video. Hit that like button, subscribe, comment, and as always, I'll see you in the next one.